Okay, here's where we left off. Um, we used um, the fourth kinematic equation, um, and no, understanding this was a constant net force, and that accelerated this mass and resulted in this mass having velocity, and we came up with an expression for the, the work was equal to one half the mass times the velocity squared, and we, we define this to be the kinetic energy K. And if it had some initial velocity, I'm sorry, I left the square off there. I hope you caught that before. Um, uh, we ended up with the work energy theorem. The work done by the net force is equal to the change of kinetic energy. I want to show you a second way of deriving this. See, this, this is kind of the regular physics way of defining the work energy theorem. But, you know, we did have some simplifying assumptions here that this force was constant and therefore I could use the kinematic equations. What if this force wasn't constant uh, with displacement? What if this was a varying force? A net force, but a varying net force. It's okay, the work energy theorem still works. And let me show you how that's done. Um, let's say the work is equal to uh, the integral. Now we're gonna use uh, a little calculus here. Let me zoom in, it's a little small. Uh, the work done by um, uh, the net force, well, this is the net force dot dr. Uh, now, just for to make things a little simple, let's just say that the net force is in the x direction, and I can make this dx. So this is going to be equal to, um, the, well, the net force is just ma, and this is going to be dx. But take a look at the acceleration. What is the acceleration vector? Or what is acceleration defined to be? Well, the acceleration is defined to be m dv dt times dx. Now, so this is acceleration right here. We can use the chain rule here to rearrange these variables a little bit. Look at this little trick we're going to do. This is mass times dx dt. All I'm moving, I'm moving the dx over here and the dv down here. But what is dx dt? dx dt is v, it's velocity. So this is going to be mv dv. Now since I made a change of variable from dx to dv, I'll make my starting velocity and my final velocity, I'll just call it v. And now I'm just going to evaluate this integral, and I get, well, the mass comes out, it's constant, and v times dv is v squared, but I use the power rule, so I have to divide by 2, and I have to evaluate this from v naught to v. When I substitute in my final and initial velocity, I get 1 half, there's the, the 1 half right there, the mass times the final velocity squared minus one half the mass times the initial velocity squared. And I end up with what I got before, the work done by the net force. Now this has to be, that, that has to be a net force for any of this to work, um, is equal to the change in kinetic energy uh, of the object. So. Um, what I'd like you to do uh, now is uh, work uh, example um, seven uh, in your book and use these ideas uh, to solve uh, example seven. And example seven is on uh, page 195. So please pause the video now, do the example, and, uh, and then we'll, I'll come back and talk more about it. Okay, ready? Pause it now. Okay, I hope that problem went, uh, went well for you. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do that example together. Uh, so this is example seven on page 195, and I'm going to read the example uh, to you. It says, 
A six kilogram block initially at rest is pulled to the right along a, ho a horizontal frictionless surface by a constant horizontal force of 12 newtons. Find the speed of the block after it has moved uh, three meters. So here's given. Uh, we've got a six kilogram block. I'll go ahead and put it on wheels to emphasize that it's frictionless. It has a mass of six kilograms. It's pulled uh, to the right along a horizontal frictionless surface by a constant horizontal force of 12 newtons. So there's my 12 newtons. And it's at rest, so initial velocity is zero. So we want to find um, the speed of the block after it has moved three meters. So delta x is three meters, so I want to find out what the final velocity is. Now please listen to me now. When you have a problem where uh, that involves force and displacement, and all they're asking for is a final velocity, then you can use the work energy theorem instead of Newton's laws and uh, you know the stuff that we did in chapter five. The work energy theorem just says this: the work done by the net force is equal to the um, force the net force times the displacement. Now everything's all lined up here so I'm not going to worry about the dot product or anything like that. And this is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. The work energy theorem. Well, so now I can uh, say well the net force looking at this picture is 12 newtons. The displacement is 3 meters and that's going to be equal to one half k, or I'm sorry, one half mv squared minus one half m v naught squared. This is the change in kinetic energy. This is of course is zero. And now I can solve for v directly here. This is uh, three times twelve is thirty-six. Thirty-six joules. So. Um, let me move this up a little bit. So I've got V is equal to the work done, which was 36 joules. But now to solve for V, I multiply that by 2. I divide by the mass, which is 6 kilograms. And then I take the square root of it. And so when I do that, I get a final velocity of 3.5 meters per second. It's a different way of solving some of the problems that we did before. Um, and uh, so anyway, this is a, a, a very uh, good way of, of solving these problems using the work energy theorem. Um, many times it's, uh, you know, it's, it's easier to do let me show you a real quick example of when you would use the work energy theorem instead of, you know, um, kinematics and Newton's second law and so on. Let's zoom out a little bit. I just have enough time to show you this really quick. What if you had a frictionless surface that was curved like this? You had something that was kind of a path like this. Um, uh, oh, you know what? No, forget about it. I'm not going to do that. Um, let's just end it here because I'm running out of time. Um, here's, you know, the work energy theorem can be used to figure out your final velocity uh, when the work done is by the net force. So let's call it a day. All right, good luck with the homework. Have a very nice day. Goodbye.